it's very specific for you that you fuse singing and drumming into one artistic expression. How do you do that? How do you feel about that? Well, you know, uh, it, it started off, I grew up singing in church uh, all my life, my whole family, uh, all musicians. And so uh, my drum playing is something that I've also grew up doing, but I took that further and studied in college and, you know, studied jazz intensely. And so when I got ready to make my debut record, I was trying to figure out a way to be myself and include all of my upbringing as well as my edification and my training and knowledge. And I slipped up on the concept of the melodic nature of the voice and the rhythmic nature of the drums. And so I'm sitting at the drums and I'm singing and I'm playing. I'm like, oh man, this is kind of cool. <laughs> so I started to, you know, prepare and do a record and, and I started to do some gigs around town to kind of develop the concept and uh, the label was down to do it. And there you have it. Uh, next thing you know, I was singing on the record and playing drums and the concept was birth. You know, that's what we do as artists. You know, we search for things that are unique. And we search for ways to, to, to get our concept and our ideas out. And that's what it was all about for me. It was purely organic and natural. Your album uh, presents you as a gifted singer, drummer, composer and band leader. Four different directions, in fact. Uh, where do you feel most comfortable and uh, how do you see your development? Yes, uh, you know, I, I would say... Band leader is probably the most comfortable place for me uh, because for me, I love music. And so I'm all about the moment, you know, and, and being able to detect the moment when it happens. Uh, and so when it comes to being a band leader, I pretty, I call I think I'm pretty good at that, at gauging what needs to happen, when it needs to happen, how it needs to happen. And uh, of course, I spend most of my time edifying my, my drumming abilities when it comes to going to college and studying jazz and, and transcribing and, and checking out all the greats who have played this great music. When it comes to singing, I have no training there. It's all just completely, you know, church homegrown, you know, and, and basically I also took that and check out a lot of soul music, you know, Marvin Gaye, you know, Lee Dorsey, you know, some Stevie down at Hathaway. And so it, basically my drumming and my, my, my vocals are coming from two completely different approaches, you know, And bringing them together, you start to actually notice the similarities and the uh, the the differences between the two. So, yeah, I can't say which one I prefer. Uh, most people say, you know, the singing drummer or the drumming singer. <laughs> uh, but I like to say, you know, man, I'm just a musician, you know. At the end of the day, if you listen to the whole entire record, I tried to mesh the concepts together to where you couldn't notice, you know that I was necessarily playing drums and singing. When you see it live, it's supposed to bring light to one another, you know. When you see the drums and the singing and the singing and the drumming, they're supposed to magnify each other, you know what I mean? So, Being so true to music and so true to yourself, how would you describe yourself and your feeling for music? So how would we know you as a person through your art? Well, you know, I would say me as a person through my art, for, for me, it's about the message. That's probably the number one thing. Uh, the message um, to me, being an artist and being able to play music and have this gift of presenting music, uh, it's all about you utilizing the music for something greater. That's for me it is. And so when I sing these songs, when I play these songs, you play them from a deeper place, not only because, you know, you know, you like to, but because we have the ability to, to, to have a very tremendous effect on people through music, you know? So there's a song sack full of dreams on the record, you know, that song touched me, you know, there was so much going on in our world, you know, and, and it would be great if a world could be like that. You know, the song says, you know, wanting the same, wanting to care, wanting to share all of my dreams for the world. Can they learn to understand the world of love that I'm dreaming? That's a message, man. You sing that and you play it and play it from your heart. You know, people can really, really understand and think twice about some things, you know, negative or positive. You know, it's all about positivity and love in regards to that. So that's for me. I play all music from a deeper place. Even if it doesn't have any lyrics, you know, the melody can tell a story, you know. 
And everybody in the room may not have the same story that they come up with, but we all are on the same ride together. So, Let's go back to your roots. Could you tell us more about your childhood, about your family? When did you realize that music is an important part of your life? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, yeah. Growing up, you know, it was all around me. My grandfather was a pastor. My mom missed the music. Uh, my, my uncle was pastors. My my. Uh, my dad was a prolific pianist and singer and writer. So music for me was all around me, especially in regards to the church, being a pastor's kid, as well as music just being a part of our fabric. It was the way we, you know, it was it was a part of everyday life, you know. Uh, it, you know, playing in church, I played organ first. That was my first instrument. I was playing piano, playing organ. And so for me, it wasn't even about a specific instrument at first. That's why singing A lot of people who know me growing up, they know that I sung, you know, that I, that I could sing. But it was, it was a part of us. It was like everybody could do it. You know, it was like, yeah, you grew up like this. Here, come on, sing this song. You know, come on, uh, lead this song. You know, the, you play this. You know, it was really natural. So growing up, music was all around me. And uh, one, I think one of the most important things that I gained from the music being around me that early is that everything had a feeling and an emotion to it. Everything had a certain kind of context, you know. It wasn't about, you know, uh, uh, a technical understanding of music. It was more so about an emotional effect of music, you know, for me, you know. And so, and it's still like that. My mom's a minister of music at a church. My grandmother passed, but she was a minister of music for years. And my, my uncles, everybody plays. Now, everybody, I'm the only one to go to school for music. I'm the only one to continue my development And uh, I thank my mother for that. My mother said, you know what, I don't want you to be just a church musician. I want you to, to you know, edify your gifts and develop and uh, also, you know, put yourself in different environments so that you can grow. She put me in the arts program where I learned jazz and classical music and learned how to read and, and you know, legitimize myself, shall we say. <laughs> uh, um, and when she did that, it blew my mind. It did mm -hmm. because it put me around a lot of young, talented musicians Who, who were just as hungry as I was as a young age. I may not have had the same background that I've had. Some of them did. I met some who had a very similar background, but a lot more, some of them did not. But what we did have in common was that we were extremely passionate about music and what we wanted to do, you know? And so that, that being said, that was my upbringing, you know? All the way up until I got to college, if, if it wasn't for mom and what she did for me, I don't think I ever would have been t taking this road to, to be a jazz musician turned soul singer turned, you know, singing drummer turned drummer singer singing. Yes. <laughs> you so. have had a very rich life and um, a lot of uh, influences and um, a lot of things you have come to know and incorporate in your art. And uh, this is why I would like to ask you, because in your music we can so clearly feel the gospel tradition, but also the classical jazz approach and also the New Orleans kind of uh, party and celebration and openness to the world. So I would like to ask you about the tradition. How do you feel about it being able to move us forward without holding us back? Oh, wow. Well, you know, well, that's a great question, I must say. Um, I, I think the tradition is so important. Um, the funny part is, you know, there's there's a huge argument, I think, that happens uh, in regards to the, uh, the young jazz generation, which, you know, that's my generation as well. And we're all trying to figure out exactly what, you know, what's the right blend, pushing the music forward or replicating the tradition, which way, should we do it? You know, we're all trying to figure out, okay, we're going to go left or go right. Are we going to replicate? Are we going to, are we going to push it forward and create something new? And I think what's funny is what I feel as though that I've been able to capture, at least what I'm trying to capture. That's what I'll say. I'm trying to capture is, is I understand the lineage already. I spent a lot of time dealing with the lineage, you know, with some of the different artists I've played with, Uh, I also live in New Orleans, Louisiana, where I get like the really old traditional concept of what we call jazz. And so I feel like the only way that I'm able to stretch in the future and deal with some of the music 
that I would love to deal with is because I understand the beginning and how it all worked out. So I think what's funny is if you really understand the lineage, you will naturally never forget it. And it will inform what you try to create for the future. You get what I'm saying? So basically understanding the lineage actually helps keep you grounded when you start to push your music forward. Here I am with my album, and I thought about that. Trust me, I've uh, being a jazzer and coming up, um, up up under the rings of Marcus Roberts, who worked with Winston Marcellus for years. You know, I've been around very traditional teachers, and so, and as well as living in New Orleans, which is a very traditional place, as well as you know, uh, pretty steep roots in regards to R and B, rhythm and blues, or soul music, funk music. I, I understand the lineage of how music you know, was was the inception of music, the inception of jazz, and what the mesh was supposed to feel like being in New Orleans. So essentially what happens is, you know, as I create this music and as I create this concept we call uh, Jameson, which is, you know, my, my record, I try to do that. I try to say, okay, you know what? Like, let's, let's, let's create something really natural, really honest, that involves who I am as an artist, as well as bring everything that I've learned up to this point together. And when you do that, you're able to really, really tap into something special, I feel like, you know, because you're gathering the concepts from your your upbringing before you even knew anything about music. And then you're gathering everything that you've learned, you know, uh, uh, up until that point. So what happens then is you get a really natural product. You get a natural product that has the history in it, has the lineage in it, as well as you're pushing it forward because it's you. People don't realize that when, when it's just you, you're already going to be pushing the music forward. Even if you're, you're so-called replicating the past, it's not going to be, I'm never going to sound like Philly Joe Jones. I'm not going to sound like Tony Williams. I'm not going to sound like Billy Higgins. I'm not going to sound like Miles Davis. I'm not going to sound like, you know, uh, uh, Freddie Hubbard. I'm not going to sound like them. It's me. I'm already different. When we are talking about your identity, how do you see your contribution if we are thinking of you first as a musician, drummer and singer, and second as a jazz player of the new generation? Mm. Oh, wow. Uh, as, a, as a jazz player of the new generation, to be honest with you, you know, I'm pretty open-minded, you know, as much as most of the, the, the performance work that I've done up with the drums, especially in the jazz tradition, you know, working with my, my friend and sister, Cecile McLaurin Salvant, uh, as, as well as working with um, another great jazz vocalist, Car Carmen Lundy. I've worked with her for years. They are very different in styles. You know, Cecile's coming from the old 1920s, you know, Judy Garland, the concept, the folk element of, of the folk music. Carmen Lundy is more of an original composition She explores her music from that perspective. Um, even Southern with Christian McBride. I've, I've done a lot of work with different people inside the States. And so, to be honest with you, me as an a, a artist, uh, a lot of people don't know this, but I'm pretty open. As, as, as much as I'm about the tradition, I feel like, you know, I just did a tour with Snarky Puppy uh, in South America as well. And so I'm actually wide open when it, when it regards to the, the spectrum of music I like to deal with. So when it comes to my contribution, I would like for my contribution as a player to be uh, someone who is completely versatile and understanding of the lineage of the music. You know, I like to be versatile. I like to play in different energies, different perspectives, different, you know, musical situations. At the same time, understanding the lineage of whatever I'm playing. So there's a funk lineage. There's a jazz lineage, you know, there's a there's a classical lineage. And to be honest with you, too, it's all one big pipeline to me. It's not even separate. <laughs> And so that will be my my contribution. You love music uh, that makes you feel good. Which music makes you feel that way? All music. <laughs> I don't have a specific genre. For me, there's always a moment to capture in whatever I'm playing. You know, and when I perform live, I try to deal with that. So I can't call a specific genre. Of course, I've studied jazz the most, and I grew up playing gospel. Um, but I'm also, like, really deep in the funk tradition as well. You know, I love funk music, you know, the meters, the funky meters, you know. And so for me, it's, it's about the moment, you know, capturing the specific moment in whatever I'm playing. And, and I stay that way, stay even kill, so that I can always, you know, be able to relate to whatever I'm playing. 